so if I was to make a game, this is what your choices are when you're playing RimWorld. Okay. Do you have Crash Landed, which is three Crash Land survivors, a classic RimWorld experience. If you get three that are barely escaped, um, what's it? Uh, three of you wake up in your cry sleep, sarcophagi, uh, to sound of silence and ripping metal. Barely get to escape the pods before the ship is torn apart. Sometime later, you land on its unknown rim world. Uh, the faction will be a new rivals. You start with three people chosen from eight, and these are the resources that you get to land with. Um, basically, oh, I'll click into one or two of them so you can see in a moment. But Lost Tribe is... Uh, your tribe is destroyed and now great blood machines sent by the gods. Five of you managing to escape. Now it's time to build a new home. Note, since you'll start poor and lack technology, this is a difficult scenario. So basically you start with five people chosen from eight. I'll explain that in a minute. And these are the things you start with. So you get kind of some stuff, like you get a random pet. For instance, you get a little bit of uh, weapons, a little bit of food, stuff like that. So you might be able to survive with that, but starting with five people, you might face issues with like feeding them straight up. So that can be a problem. That can be a challenge. Um, Rich Explorer is you call crazy for leaving your Glitter World home. Glitter World is basically like the top tier um, of technology, just to let you understand. Uh, but you always yearn to explore the stars outside the neurostimulator. You're now at the end of your long journey in the cry of sleep planning on an unknown room world to see what it's like. Since your starting character lacks some skills, it's especially difficult scenario in the early game. Your faction will be new arrivals. You start with one person chosen from eight. You start with research gun turrets. Um, and you start off with like some really high-end shit too. Like a lot of silver and a, a lot of steel and stuff. This is the whole time I thought everyone was a criminal no it's not a prison simulator <laughs> there is actually literally a prison simulator game that looks a lot like rim world and i swear i would be probably pretty good at it um but no these are this is actually the choices like, i'll go into one it won't take me long to start one and i can just straight up just show you this is also just explaining it to anybody that's literally only ever seen me play rim world that this is actually what RimWorld is. So you could at many things, I feel like. And yeah, I'd probably be all right at that game. Naked Brutality is you went under anesthetic for a minor surgery. Now you've woken in a drop pod crashing into a distant planet. You're naked alone and totally unprepared. Can you survive? Warning, there is nothing fair about the scenario. It is extremely difficult. Death can happen for any reason. Your faction will be new arrivals. You start with one person chosen from eight a player's starting character have a 100% chance to start naked. So that is one of the hardest ones to try. Um, a lot of people that want to just have a challenge will go with that, but you may not last long in any case. Crash landed custom, I've got a save for that. And in my case, I have a pre-save of things that I want to drop with if I want to do that. And in case I have 10 people, that's from Nido Colony. That's Nido's crash landed colony. Um... So that would have all the people that I started with and, you know, they've got 50% chance to start with cryo sickness and stuff like that. Um, but if I was to say click on crash landed and I go into scenario editor because I think I think that's part of my prepare carefully one I've got and like load or save randomized shit. Like if I go next, then you've got different storytellers, right? So um, Cassandra classic is Cassandra creates story events on classic increasing curve of challenge and tension. She push you with dangerous events and give breathing room, then push back, um, then come back to push once more. You can choose to play on different settings too. So peaceful, you might be able to like, you know, made, uh, major direct threats are disabled and challenging. Challenges like disease and mental breaks and uh, mad animals can still occur and stuff like that. So basically, if you wanted to learn the game, with increasing intervals of difficulty and stuff like that. You can go through this. You can literally go up to Losing is Fun, where um, the setting is designed to be unfair. Huge threats will crash upon you without mercy until your colony dies. And you choose a setting if you're happy with the drama of struggling and dying. So, and then you've got an option for saving or commitment mode, which means that basically you can only save the game when quitting the game, or like I do anytime. 
So they're the two options that you get with that. But that's one. She's one storyteller. This is the one I use. Phoebe Chillax gives lots of time between disasters to build your colony, but beware at high difficulty she can hit as hard as anyone. So this is where it gives me time to build up a colony. But once I've built up a colony and my colony wealth is considered to be advanced, I have to deal with basically the same kind of crap as like Cassandra and shit. So um, it gives me a bit more time to relax as a streamer and be able to like discuss and have conversations and stuff like that as opposed to just full on just escalation, escalation, escalation. Like I get the chance to fall back a bit. The only problem is she can lull you into a false sense of security and then you get hit by something really hard because you just haven't been hit by something hard for a while. And that's when you see me go into those massive battles where I struggle because I've been lulled into a false sense of security where I'm not expecting to get something bad happen and I'm unprepared like everybody's guns are on the ground like that. This is Randy Random. This is who Grimm plays with and who Triantha will probably want to play with. And he doesn't follow any rules. He generates random events and he doesn't care if uh, they make story or triumph or utter hopelessness. It's all a dream to him or it's all drama to him. Um, warning, since Randy is truly random, he will sometimes send extremely difficult and unfair groups of events at you. It makes for high drama and unavoidable sacrifices. Um, so basically, if you want to play the game as hard as you possibly can, you play on him, you play on losing his fun or like basically any of these kind of settings and stuff like that, and you play on commitment mode. And therefore, you only get to save when you finish the game for the day. Um, and basically, everything's as hard as fucking possible. Um, Grim loves playing on him. Again, a lot of people that do play on Randy do not get to play very long games. So you may only have like a maximum of 10 people before your colony is decimated. Um, this guy's got crazy tat. Yeah. I'm surprised you didn't like notice like the bionic eye and arm and stuff like that. Like it's basically showcasing that like you will lose limbs playing him. But like if I was to say go into her and I'm on, I think I'm on community builder. I think, right? But let's say click that and reload anytime. If I was to go into here, my world seed is currently set to traders. Welcome back, Waver. I'm just kind of like giving a heads up and explaining what the actual game of RimWorld is and not how I play it, but how the actual game is like for anybody that's interested in actually playing RimWorld. Since I do not play anywhere like it's supposed to. So if I wanted to change the seed, I could change it and it changes the world. So I'll just show that in a second. We got 30% global coverage. Our overall rainfall's normal, temperatures normal, population's normal, and all of the factions have a percentage of like one one times faction. So if I generate this, this will just take like about a minute, probably. Um, if I, okay, that didn't actually take that long. Where the fuck am I? Am I super zoomed in? <laughs> yeah, I was. Um, okay, so this is a 30% map on the world seed um traders right so if i look at planet it will say world seed traders and the coverage is 30 percent and this is one type of each um thing each so then you can like select if i zoom in you can select a tile and that's where you can put a settlement kind of thing anywhere on the map okay if i go back i randomize this let's make it poker well actually i shouldn't do that hold up let's change it to Oh shit, not capitalized. That changes it to traders. And let's make you 50%. And I'm gonna increase these each by one. Just to give you an example of what it looks like, right? Let's generate this. Then I'll go back to 30% and I'll show you the difference of a different map and changing like temperature and shit. Um, again, it just takes a minute. Each one is individually generated, but it's the same option. Like there will be 50%, 30%, and 100% map. But this is this is fifty percent, and this is the double. I really don't understand this game, but I think the story of this game is amazing. The game that I'm playing so far is, um, I don't know. Everybody has a different version of the game because some people play it differently, all with mods and stuff. So this is a fifty percent. So if I zoom out, if I go around the world, you can see that the back half of it is not got anything on it. Okay, 
So, but if you have a look at the actual colors here, we have two colors of blue. Okay. We have two different shades of yellow. We have two different shades of green. Um, and same with like all the enemies, like there's two different shades of like skulls. So that's increasing the factions. That's increasing the world coverage. And if I go back, like if I choose a different seed, let's take it back to 30% just so it's a bit faster. Any company will be fine if I take this all back to one. Oh, it doesn't take song. Whoops, let's put that back. Um, so this will show you a different rendering of the map. It should look completely different. See, <laughs> like it's all up the top. Um, so they can change so much like that. But if I was to go back and I was to say, hey, we want a lot of rainfall and let's make it really hot. So it's kind of like really tropical. Okay. And if I go back in, same map, same percentage of coverage. I go back in. Now it's all green because it's now, I can click on it, tropical rainforest, majorly. And there is no ice anymore. If I was to go back and I said the overall temperature was really low, but the rainfall was still really, really high, and I go back in, it should be mostly ice or tundra. Yeah, there, same map, just tundra. So these are the things that you can change about it. If I wanted to change the amount of population and say it's really crowded, we should end up with a whole heap more. Um, yeah, there we go. I, I actually personally like to play on crowded. So this has as many faction allies as you can possibly get without adding mods. You can get more and you can get more different types of factions as well. But let's say we're going with this. Okay, so then you have an option to go advance. If you want to, like, if you want to go easy on your computer, right, click a smaller map. That's just a fact. Just go with a smaller map. I play on large because I don't know why, but I like to. It doesn't recommend you play on large. If I select a large map, it says it's designed to play on medium maps. Um, and they do, they do have plenty of space. If you go with... Um, if you go with an even numbered map, be aware that you know how my map, if I come to the center, I have four dots in the very center of the map. Um, if you want to build a symmetrical base, you're gonna have two doors in the center of everything. If you want a not if you want a symmetrical base where you have a central door to everything, you're gonna want this. And now Methless, I know that you're particular about that from seven days. So trust me, I'm the same. I made the mistake. I went with an even one. I shouldn't have done it. You can also choose which, um, what do you call it? I'm going to select that for a moment. You can choose which season you want to start in. If you want to, say, make it hard for your people, you could start in winter. And you could say, we're on a tundra map. It's winter. Everybody's going to fucking freeze to death. That's a fantastic idea. Um, I'll check somewhere random. It will move me around if I want, or I can select like here. And that's now my site. Uh, you can also have a look at your hostility of factions. So that's a lot to customize this game. There really is. This is, I think, because you didn't find me until like I was well and truly several months into this game. So um, there was a lot of this that you didn't get to see. This is why I said I really think you'd like this game because there's a lot to it. And you can play it however the hell you want. You can also add mods or not play with mods. You can add DLCs, like the DLCs and stuff. I can show you that in a moment. But like some of them will let your people reproduce. Some of them will in like, I think let you have like some kind of like um, religion stuff like that. If you want to have that in your game. But yeah, like, you know how I've got four allies. They don't start out as allies. They start as extremely hostile, but you can make them allies. And you get permanent out, uh, permanent like uh, hostiles. If I go next, let's say we've selected an area. So this is the eight people that you get to choose from. Okay, this in total, these are the three people out of the eight that are randomly generated for you. So if I don't want Ed, let's say I want to select Matthew instead of that. I think I can just I don't know if I can drag it. There we go. Yeah, let's get rid of get rid of Ed. Now that's my options. 
that's like the colony that I can choose if I want like all females or something like that we can do that hey night wolf uh welcome in that's such a sleepy wolf I'm just um kind of like giving like an explanation of like how Rimworld world kind of actually is you know not the way I play it but head pats for night wolf so this is the base game so if I had a colony where I started with one person I'd have one person to choose out of all eight if I had five same situation um and out of here like you can change their name if you want um if that's something you want to do like this person is superhuman depressive jealous they're incapable of compare uh caring because they've been a sickly child like there's a backstory behind every one of these settings I'll show you in a second as well as an adult this was the like choice that they made I still happily receiving headbutts and all um they have a health condition um they've got relationships on the on the world as well which means if they happen to encounter them they'll have relationships with them um i don't understand team skills yet i've never really looked at it but yeah they've got their skills and stuff but if i wanted to randomize her so goodbye felicia we've now got you or if i change again got levy and this was a shop kid on top of that he was in cryo for 260 years um so he's his actual age is 63 years old but um if you include the time that he was in cryo he's 260 years old um so i don't know how much that affects stuff but it is worth knowing because they're supposed to have traveled in cryo sleep this person's got a bad spine which means that they should be incapable of calling um, you know, not necessarily correlated to it, but there's different things like shop kid, conceptual artists and stuff, and their skills changed. If you want to, I have the mod, prepare carefully. If you want to create something specific, for instance, you go into prepare carefully. And this is when I can come in here and I can say, okay, well, I have, let's have a look at Levy. So Levy, he is in fact that old, but, um, Let's say, let's say he's actually, um, I don't actually think I can make him over 100. But yeah, let's say he's that old. Okay, so 120 is the oldest he can get. We'll load in, he'll die. <laughs> That's kind of how it works. But then you can also get in here. If you have prepared carefully, you can customize shit. So like, let's change his hair color. Get him blue hair and his beard. Uh, let's say, slide that a little bit more. A little bit more different color. I oh, know that just changed the whole thing. Oh, he's got a beard. That's right. Let's see. That's what I'm changing. Okay, so let's give him let's give him a bushy beard. Let's take his hair and give him. Hmm, I'm thinking spikes. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> you can change like his head type. This is with prepare carefully mod again. So you can change that. Um, you can change their body type. There's only a couple of body types. It's really limited, so you don't get much. You can change skin tone, and on that you can change how much of the slider of that particular tone. So if you want to have a vampire colony, go for it. You know, whatever works. Um, and let's see, like you can add accessories like psychic shock lance, like that one's starting off a psychic shock lance, and there's psychic shock lance. Oh, fuck it. Yeah, actually, hold on. That was a nice color there. Yeah, let's go with that. They get a psychic shock lance like that. Let's give them... Uh, let's give them sunnies. You can change all their clothes with hair carefully. I know, I can't do eye coverings. Uh, no. Top, top layer clothing. Let's see. A duster. Mm, marine armor. Parker. Plate armor. Let's go with plate armor. And let's make it gold. But let's make it fancy gold make it different color gold I think um it kind of makes it green I guess the slider on blue oh let's make it piss yellow they'll do it um what else we got let's leave that alone now so this is prepare carefully again remember this is to customize uh let's see so he was a shop kid now this is where you can get in and customize so as a child he was an awful dodger so now that's changed his skills massively and it's also changed what he's incapable of. So watch this. I'll change that again. Let's say that, let's get in here. Let's say they were, 
Uh, let's not go. Poor kid. Mm, quiet nerd. They were a quiet nerd as a child. They're capable of dumb labor, caring, social, hauling, but they have got some skills. So they're kind of intellectual. They've got a bit of cooking, you know, crafting, artistic stuff. They're kind of good at that. But let's change the conceptual artist. Let's 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 get them something better. They were a mechanics engineer as an adult, right? Suddenly they're great at crafting, and the pretty much everything else hasn't changed except for construction has changed. But now they're only incapable of dumb labor. Um, so if I wanted to randomize the backstory, veteran, assassin, mercenary, it changes what they're incapable of. Um, it changes their stats. You can also change this. This is what I got um, griefed for with Nido, was that I buffed up some of my characters a bit too much, and this is why with Asura I have not. Um, so I basically left them all as they were, but you can also change how passionate they are about things too. So you can make it that they're extremely passionate about plants, but they've got no skills. Or like me, they're just, you know, moderately okay with cooking, but like, you know, they got like a 50-50. <laughs> Um, this person's got like a health ailment, so we can remove that and we can add an injury or condition or we can add bionics. Let's say we'll add a condition. They have Alzheimer's. So they have major Alzheimer's. So they're violent, firefighting, capable of, they're incapable of that, but they, um, they, they're going to basically be having a mental break all the time because they don't, they have no fucking idea what's going on. Um, let's say we've got Gamard and Iron Willed, but we can add in, say they're a bisexual, and let's say that they have, you can stack, you can stack some things, but you can't stack some things. Like Iron Willed and Gamard is already out of there because they're incapable of certain things. Um, so they're lazy. Okay. So that hasn't changed anything for this. If I change that, they're only incapable animals. Randomize this. Like you can give them up to four traits. Um, well, let's see, give them some implants, whatever this is, a leg. Let's give them a right bionic leg. All right. So none of that changes, but it will kind of like change their stuff when they actually get into the game, like how fast they walk, things like that. So like that's how much you can customize with prepare carefully. But on top of that, you can save them. In my case, I can load like I saved Grim once I got him. I created him. I've got James. James is prepared um, from Discord. I also got um, I've got I guess Tofu as he is in his like back in all his glory with all of his like OP stats when I saved that. Uh, who else we got in here? We got Tater, we got Raccoon. There's a Raccoon. Raccoon um, Abandoned. She was from one of my maps. I don't know which one she was from. I don't think she was Nido. Who else we got in here? We got Beatrice. Beatrice was from one of my early maps. She was from Coalition. She might have been from Coalition too, actually. But then you can also... Um, I don't know what I just did then. I was just move them up or something. Oh. You can add them into the the main group. Get out there. Yeah, fuck off, get out of. Oh, you can add people. So yeah, then you can go into. I think Tofu has a relationship. Yeah, Tofu's got a relationship with Matthew, and he's in a relation. Uh, Connor and Ada are in a relationship. So it's a parent-child relationship. So let's say Tofu is in a lover relationship with uh, Levy. So now they're lovers. So if they find each other in the world, um, they're in a relationship. Their, their information is that. And if, as for equipment, you can add in, this is what they're starting with. This is what they get on this particular load-in. But you could say, hey, I want to add, I'm going to give them, let's see, Little World Medicine. And I'm going to add a hundred little things of glitter world medicine so now when they load into the game they have a hundred glitter world medicine so when i started asora one of the things i had to do was i had to bring in a lot of packaged survival meals i brought in a astounding amount and i expected them to either decay on their own because they're left outside or my people didn't eat them 
and they kind of didn't eat them. But it did get them through the first year without them just completely dying. Um, and that was the only way I could do that with 21 people starting on a map that had no crops at all active and not enough animals. That was the only way I could do that. But yeah, this is the prepare carefully. But let's say that this is all great. If I hit start, it would then crash land, which if you want to see that, I have got that on my YouTube channel. It's literally the very first video in both the Nido and Asora colony. I'm not going to load into it because that will literally just start a new game. Um, but yeah, or you can, if I cancel that, you can load presets. So I've got new team unique resources. Let's see, like we got a winter one for like starting in winter, which I load that preset. So this has, this has all of my characters as they are, like how they were when I met them. So you can actually see what they've come in with. I did color coordinate them. I changed their colors. This was one of my original colonies. I don't know which one, one of them. Um, but it basically had like everybody as I first uniquely met them and like whatever gear they had, Sam was fucking nuts. Um, that one is obviously edited in, but silverware is correct. Seahorse is correct. Well, that's fine. But yeah, they had, everybody had relationships and stuff like that. And the equipment that I had, I had, Selected cats, panthers, thrombos. We had some medicine. We had a lot of food. We had winter thrombo fur. We had thrombo fur luxuries, golden games. We had psychic emanators. We had all sorts of stuff for that. As opposed to like, I look at well-off colony. Well-off one should have a lot of stuff. They had chickens. They had chinchillas. They had all kinds of guns. They had insect chili out the fucking wazoo. They had like... Hyperweed Parkers, they had like super luxury gear and lots of gold, lots of silver, lots of food, medicine, all that stuff. You can start with that, but I can tell you what, it's very, very hard to get your entire colony to move everything out of the way into storage. It's easier to build storage box around where your shit landed. Um, that's the fastest way to secure anything. Um, yeah, cancel out of that. But yeah, that's basically, that's going prepare carefully. If I didn't hit into prepare carefully, we would just have the ability to randomize each one of these characters and change their name. And then once you've selected your three, and you can occasionally randomize in and get people with different hair colors. If I go through a few, you might see some like various different hair colors come through. It's rare, but it does happen occasionally. And either way, when you are happy with whoever you've got, you hit start and that also just bam, you're into the game and you only get whatever base resources come with that particular load in, which, you know, is whatever it is, depending on which one you're playing through. And same with this. So like if I wanted to go back in as another group, as in Nido, I think that one's Nido, I could just auto load into that and I wouldn't have to change anything. It would already have my people and everything saved. So yeah, that's kind of, I guess like, the long thing of RimWorld as for the DLCs like it literally has it in here like the royalty one lets you fight with a shattered empire faction like it's got options here like you can get psychic powers you can use like the what you call it the space transport ships you can have thrones you can have like all kinds of fucking I think magic abilities um yeah different like mech weapons stuff like that and then ideology and stuff. Uh, you can have, obviously, like, different technology. You can have uh, cults. You can have different religions. Um, what else can you have? You can basically create your own belief system, rituals, preferences, uh, symbols, cannibals, blind, underground, and mole people. Um, basically, it, there's a lot of variety. So base game itself, core, RimWorld, allows you to have a lot of um, variety to begin with. And then if you have one of the DLCs, again, even more variety, you start adding in mods, like even just prepare carefully. If you just had prepare carefully, like these are my mods, right? This is it. You go into your Steam workshop, you find one that you like the look of, you save it or favorite it, whatever the fuck you do. I haven't done it for so long. And then you add it in here and you just click it and yeah. I would probably, if you wanted to get a really custom looking game, Prepare Carefully would be a great one to start with, but you don't really need any of these 
if you don't want to. You do need, uh, I think, Harmony and Hugs live to get some of these to work together. They kind of work in tandem with each other, but it's it's nothing. All this shit's free anyway. Um, all the mods are free, usually, as far as I'm aware of it. And yeah, then you can have a truly fucking customized game. However, aware that the more mods you add, the uh, more of a hard slog your computer's got to go running it. Same with like the more uh, percentage of render the world is, the more um, factions that you have allowed and the larger the colony that you've got plus like, um, uh, what was the other one? The size of the map. All of those factor into how easy it is to play RimWorld and or how difficult, how complicated, challenging, whatever you want to go with. 